I love the idea of, of creating things for people to, to look at, enjoy, to have a conversation with. And at some point, as I'm developing myself and my identity in my work, I thought that, you know, what if I took the music form that had the greatest impact on me, right? This is the, this is the music that, that helped transition me from my identity of being a Trinidadian, immigrating to this country and becoming an American. Um, and that was hip hop. Uh, my name is Sherwin Banfield. I would consider myself a multimedia contemporary artist, concentrating in public sculpture at this point. I'm a Trinidad born artist, the land of Calypso, steel pan, and doubles, right? And all of those things uh, affect me and I take with me daily as my identity. The way I got started in art, it's a natural thing. It's, it's a calling, you know? It's something that my brother and myself um, were given. And we practiced as young boys, uh, just drawing, coming up with ideas and concepts, making our own toys. Uh, and it was a, a natural, organic direction for me. So I'm taking classes at the Art Students League. And I'm slowly understanding how to develop my work and put it out there. And at some point, after studying, you gotta have to find your voice. And I started looking into myself to figure out, you know, who am I? What am I doing with this? You know, where, how can I take this and make it my own, right? And that's, that's when I started asking questions about myself and my identity and what influenced me and who was there at certain points in my life uh, and, and, and what what was the surrounding light, what music was playing, what, what was I doing? And what was interesting is the music. The music, you have these huge speaker boxes and you can't get away from it. They're everywhere. They're on trucks, they're in front of stores, they're in your living room and it's party time and it's festive and it's all encompassing. It's the culture, it's my identity, right? It's something that, that kind of helped mold me. So these speaker boxes really is something that I gravitated to and I started thinking about music and, 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 and sculpture and how can, I, um, how can I fold that together into something, something unique. Once the idea um, for Cypher and Queens uh, was accepted at Socrates Sculpture Park, um, I realized that there were other people that felt hip hop could be monumentalized. And so I got to work and I created these three uh, monuments to these three incredible hip hop artists, each from a different style that, uh, that's from an era where style difference was huge uh, accepted uh, quality um, uh, from hip hop artists. From that point, after that project, um, I was deciding where, uh, where I wanted to take this idea, what artist that I want to uh, monumentalize next. When tourists walk off that Brooklyn Bridge and they're coming to Dumbo to take pictures of the street cobblestone with the bridge, they're gonna come across Biggie. The music is gonna be playing. They're gonna hear Biggie's music because the monument is playing Biggie's music. And they'll be introduced to a part of Brooklyn through Biggie. Who is this person? What did he represent? His music is playing. What is he talking about? He's talking about his experiences in Brooklyn, right? So Brooklyn is the foundation for this Biggie sculpture. And one thing I have to say about this sculpture, it is entirely 
of stainless steel, resin, and bronze. But there's one piece of it that's made of steel that is going to rust. And it's intentionally put there to rust because I want the sculpture to be affected by Brooklyn, just like how Big was affected by Brooklyn. I believe my monument to, whether it's LL to Biggie, is going to have an effect on young kids who are black and brown to see themselves in public spaces, to elevate who they are and show that their contributions are as significant to anyone else in this country.